So chapter 148, man, this was just an absolutely insane chapter. The amount of hype that just felt like it was back to back, it gave me the chills, honestly. And now that I think about it, I feel like the last three chapters, including this one, have been week to week, back to back, right? I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure there was a chapter released just last week where we saw the first standoff between Garo and Bang. So it's interesting now seeing how fast, you know, One and Marauder are pushing these updates. But let's just get started because there is so much I want to talk about now. Let's get into it. So the chapter just immediately starts off with Garo versus Bang round two and before the actual fight we get some interesting dialogue from Bang who kind of threw me off because it sounds like now he isn't ready to kill Garo. I mean fair enough I never thought he outright wanted to put him down but it just felt like this whole time he was mentally preparing himself for that and especially now since he's a monster and Bang sees that I would have imagined he would just go for a kill here and I think it's pretty common knowledge among the heroes anyway that once you're a monster there is no way for you to go back to a human human so I'm not sure what exactly Bang is hoping for here I mean he admits to wanting to bringing him back to his senses but again it just sounds like Bang's just ditched that resolve to actually kill him and I don't have any problems with this I think it just speaks to the point Bang just has so much heart for Garo whether or not that's coming from him being his you know previous master or him just wanting to save him out of respect for being a hero or maybe even a combination of both regardless I think it's worth mentioning here so then after this we get into the actual fight and it looks like Bang is for sure going all out, according to Bomb at least. Now, granted, I do think he is showing a little mercy here based on what I said already, but I have to admit, I'm really happy that Bang isn't just straight up jobbing here either. Like, we have to imagine how strong Garo is at this point in his monsterfication, so just seeing Bang keep up with that during this fight is what I was really hoping for. Because from the looks of it, this is competitive. Even Bang takes notice when Garo was able to just copy his awakening breath by simply looking at it. And the part after this, this is really just insane on Bang's part where he does a combo starting off with a kick and then just charges at Garo, just straight rushing him before setting him flying in the air with uh, the back of his shoulder. So I would imagine in this instance where Bang goes for the offense three times in a row, Garo is just being purely outmatched here until he's finally able to, you know, catch Bang in the air for a moment with both of his legs. And then even after, Garo just drives him right into the dirt and Bang gets up and shows up like it's nothing, some blood coming from his head, but tanking that with almost no problem. And I would imagine after holding off black sperm and Fuhrer ugly he would show some sign of exhaustion maybe or even a lack in stamina but no he even outright tells Garo he's much more worthy teaching now than he was before and maybe this is just you know bang talking trash but a part of me wants to believe he's seriously saying this because he still thinks he's levels above where Garo is at and this is what makes their rematch so important right like how much has Garo improved and not only that just how it holds up against bang post monsterification so then after this we go back to Bahamut hit Fuhrer ugly and right when he's about to strike Atomic Samurai Nichiren we see Amahare uh, straight up sacrifice himself by kicking Atomic and Iain out of the way and even in his last words he asks Atomic to avenge Zanbai one of the swordsmen who died in the last chapter I believe and what's even worse is we see Nichiren who just takes the strike head on by Fuhrer ugly and he really only does this to prevent Spring Mustachio from sacrificing himself like Amahare did. So at this point the only one from the council of swordsmen still alive is atomic and dude the amount of pressure and burden on his shoulders just has to be like too much from amahari's last words to what nitrin tells him right before he dies it just has to feel insane for atomic like it makes me want to hope that somehow he's able to turn the tables here because this is kind of tragic like i know we haven't seen much of the swordsmen anyway but i think they did share some good moments in the story but anyway nitrin's final moments when fear ugly is distracted we get a pretty big reveal to us when he takes out uh this sword the sun blade and leaves it with atomic and this is really big specifically on the origin story we get on where it comes from and why because we know in the world of one punch man the setting is really just one big continent right but according to this origin story the sun blade was actually created on a separate continent a lost and ancient place that sunk into the ocean and this blade has actually been passed down for generations in the council of swordsmen and i think for manga readers this is the first time we're hearing about any other place outside of cities a through Z I could be wrong but this legend seems to imply like a certain past history or civilization that the swordsmen were aware of for generations and on top of that there exists a moon blade that's been lost for some time now and it seems the whole purpose of the council was to find that other missing half to unite both the sun and moon blade it looks like this is getting into some really supernatural elements that honestly I didn't expect one punch man to really ever touch on but I think it's interesting especially when we see how the necklace that Nichiren had was able to just 
summon or manifest a sword out of nowhere. Like I'm aware of the psychic abilities and you know insane levels of strength in the One Punch Man universe but this is like completely supernatural territory we're getting into and yeah, I really like it. And I guess it's also revealed that Nichiren was Atomic's master at some point and you know given his age and appearance that makes sense but then eventually he passes away and I think this has to be you know the start of Atomic's new mission later in the story to find the moon blade. And then we get to the end of the chapter and this is what I've been waiting on for months but we finally see the one and only golden sperm. Now in the lead up to this we're shown Genos lose an arm trying to fight off the smaller black sperms. Tatsumaki is also still struggling trying to hold them off and Darkshine trying to recover from the acid that Fear Ugly spit on him so pretty much all the heroes are just outmatched at the moment and we still have no idea where evil natural water is and for all we know he could have made his way into the ocean and Homeless Emperor uh, hasn't shown up in this chapter either but it looks like black sperm is just more fed up with Fear Ugly at this point and so takes the advantage here and just completely decks him with like one punch. And to be fair, I don't think we can say for certain that, you know, Fuhrer Ugly is dead now. I mean, for an above dragon level threat, I just think it'll take more than a punch to finally finish him off, even if it's from Golden Sperm. And keep in mind, even if the heroes are outmatched here, there is still Pig God. Tank Top Master could also be recovering here, and we haven't even seen where's Metal Bat, so there's plenty of fight left still here, and I'm especially curious as to what the Sunblade is capable of, or if it's even usable since Nichiren had it hidden away, so there's so many different ways this could play out and i cannot wait for the next chapter all right guys so that's gonna be it for me let me know how you all felt about it i think the chapters have just been getting better and better lately there was just no reason for this chapter to be as good as this was but i'm gonna leave it there guys if you liked the video please leave a like i'd greatly appreciate it and please subscribe if you're down this is my first one punch man video actually so i'm gonna be keeping up with the manga and maybe the web comic here on the channel definitely the manga for sure but as for the web comic uh i'll have to see how things play out but yeah uh, again thank you so much for watching guys have a great day